Hey there. So today we're going to learn about things you shouldn't have learned in school, but never did in this first episode of School Hacks. Now, if you're joining me for the first time, my name is Jaime Sandoval. I'm an educator. I've been educating for 14 years. And just to be clear, this is independent from my education as a teacher. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. One of the things that I love to do is I love to educate. And I've come to discover that a lot of times there's these life lessons that are important for you to learn, but they don't easily fit inside our school system. So as a result, one of the things that I do is that I would like for you to share them with you and kind of examine them. You know, me being a math teacher, I love Venn diagrams and I also love showing things in relation to how they affect and provide your life. So what I'll do is we're going to go through and do a quicker kind of examination as far as how this will help you and your life. And the first thing I want to explore is that who? So who does this apply to? Who does pushing yourself because no one's going to do it apply to? And I know that quickly you start thinking about, well, of me, of course, but you also start thinking about your family members, people that you love and care for. And so the thing comes into question is this. All the time I see this, when it comes to me personally, I see the who in everywhere. A lot of times I see my students and they have so much potential, so much gro growth that they could do, and it just goes unused. You see that there is no push for themselves. So one of the things that you need to do is find out who, and then from there, we start thinking, well, what is it? What is it that you're really pushing yourself to? And now this is what, this will lead us to think about that. You remember, every person's guaranteed to have goals in their life. So. It's very common not to push yourself just because it requires focus. It requires for you to go ahead and actually put some thought into some actions. And we always know that, you know, it's not the easiest thing. You know, we work, you know, when you walk, a lot of times you're using reflex and this reflex, it just means that you're not putting any thought or anything to it. So it's very easy for you. But when it comes to something new, and you actually have to put thought to it, that's when it becomes more difficult. So uh, I found myself that a lot of times I need to encourage my students because I could almost guarantee you that anytime you learn something new, it requires focus. So that's what it's important to actually keep that in mind. Now, where does this happen? Where does pushing yourself because nobody's gonna do it for you happen? Well, I can guarantee someone in your, sometimes in your life, you've pushed yourself. And nevertheless, you have to identify in your past times that you should have pushed yourself and didn't, and the other way around. Times that you have to go ahead and identify that where is it that you need to do it to kind of go ahead and have, keep your, your actual rewards as far as what things you could do. Now, let me tell you something. I need to remind my students every day how important it is to push themselves to have progress in class. And, you know, we know that we get an education because we need a database. We need something to kind of draw back on and be able to use for our real life and everyday purpose of things. Now, one thing that you have to find out is that change is necessary. It's one of those things that just needs to occur every day in life because without change, we will never be able to solve our future problems. So sometimes you need to address yourself, hey, how can I push myself and where? Now, and this leads us, when does this happen? So when do you push yourself? Now, this is a very important question to examine because it brings in life how often and are your perception of your reality is really what the world that surrounds you. So it's often easier not to push yourself. And one of the issues and one of the things that's so important is this, is that you sow what you reap. Or in other words, the results in life that you get is from the stuff that you, you put in. Or sometimes your rewards, and it, it could be done pretty much, but in, a, in summary, 
one of the things I can guarantee you is that the service you provide for others is really the rewards you get out of it. So the rewards that you get is actually directly involved to how much you help, you know? So, and this is not necessarily rewards, you know, it could be winnings, it could be honor, it could be decoration, it could be bonuses. But one of the things that I do as a math teacher and one of the principal founding things that we do in math is that we go ahead and we talk about input and output. And when we talk about input and output, independent, dependent, it, it means that there is a certain law that always works. That means that something happens first and as a result, something comes second. And unfortunately, a lot of people have this law backwards. When it comes to like trying to get rewards and results in life, you find out that most of the time, people just want to go ahead and get the rewards and everything else first. And then, you know, and let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. How many times have you heard somebody say, you know what? Once I get paid more, then I'll work harder, you know, and or it's the same thing as, hey, once this car starts driving me around, then I'll go ahead and put some gas in it. The world doesn't work this way. You must first be of service, first be of help. And then from from there, you will get the rewards and the things you seek after in life. Then you can go ahead and consider yourself to be successful. So it's important that you go ahead and keep that in mind that when you push yourself, it's because you're trying to have something come about and it's really in relation to help others. And one of the things I want you to, to kind of to prove to you and see, if you look at them, all the, the biggest corporations or the biggest businesses in the world, you find out that most of them, they went ahead, they serve a lot of people. Talk about Instagram, talk about Facebook, uh, Google, all these companies, what do they do? They help, they serve you. And as a result, they're wildly successful. So you have to think about yourself in this kind of fashion. Are you doing something to make yourself successful? Now, this brings us into the why. Why do you want to push yourself? This is something that I want to go ahead and make very personal. I want you to think about, you know, if you're sitting there at the end of your life, you know, we're talking about you're sitting there at a wheelchair, looking at the sunset, you know, looking, at, giving the, you know, you got to think, you know, did I accomplish everything I wanted to accomplish? Did I go ahead and live my dream the way I wanted to live it? And as an educator, it's really one of the hardest things that I need to do of really share with them the why is so important to do all these things. Now, keep in mind, right now, you're in a special age of life. Nowhere at this time is going to be the same because you have to find out that right now your brain is wired to learn. Since it's wired to learn, right now you have the ability to take concepts, to grasp them, to learn them. And you find out that you kind of, you know, they've done studies and it's about to the age of 25. So the thing you got to keep in mind that this being the time of when you have sometimes the greatest window of opportunity is the greatest reason why you should push yourself. Because you could go ahead and find out that at this level, you have the biggest potential to take your creative power and make it great for somebody else. Now, keep in mind, this is the definition of genius. So, how do you go about doing this? Now, the easiest thing is you just got to start doing it. You know, you got to think that there's two mechanisms at play here when you start thinking about anytime you bring something about. There's the mind and the body. And they're both interconnected. You can't separate one from the other. And I think it's very important for you to know that one is interconnected with the other. And one of the things I like to refer to is a bike, just because everybody could relate to a bike. And you have to realize that at times, the thing that is best for most people is when everything, when you go on the pedals and everything just flows so great and so easy because you just get on there, you're on the right gear, you're on the right surface, everything just flows. But you gotta keep in mind that sometimes you get on the pedals and they're hard. And then that's when you need to start realizing well, what's making them hard? And you have to realize that in a bike, you have front gears and back gears. 
And sometimes you could relate these to the mind and the body. So sometimes it's actually your mind that's giving you resistance. Your mind doesn't want to push yourself. And that's when you got to go ahead and with the use of your back ears, go ahead and start pushing. Because when you start pushing, you start getting momentum and they start working and interlocking. And then you can start shifting. And from there, then all of a sudden the pedals will start getting loose. Or sometimes the other way around, your mind is there. You know, like all those gears right there, they're, they're good. But when, you're, when you sit there and, you're, and you start analyzing why is it difficult, it's because your body's not agreeing with you. That's when you still start need to start doing the same. You need to start just pushing because eventually it's all going to start happening forward. Now, there's people that ask me how to go ahead and support this. Um, go ahead and hit like. Go ahead and subscribe. Share the video. That's the greatest support we could get. And as always, I thank you for sharing your time and being with us. Bye, everybody.